Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. Kids Connection is a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. And we're so happy that you've joined us today online. If this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each Sabbath for a new program where we get to sing different songs, we learn about God in a different way. And today we have something very fun, an activity, very fun activity that we're going to play with you guys. And I'm going to invite mom and dad to get ready. Or if you are watching with grandma or grandpa or aunts and uncles, whoever is an adult with you, call them up. Get them ready because we are going to need their assistance to play a little something today in our theme of the day. Now, uh, last week we asked you guys to write letters to us. And we were going to read those letters on the air. And I'm happy that three kids, with the assistance of mom and dad, wrote to us. And I'm going to read those notes to you guys now. So, Will is watching us right now. And uh, he sent us a note. Mom sent us a note for Will. And here's what it says. Our family is all home together. And Will has been building, playing with Legos doing crafts and playing outside in the backyard, as well as helping out his baby sister, Mia. I don't know if you guys remember seeing Mia here at church. So tiny, she's probably grown a little bit now, and he's helping Mia at home. That's so great, Will. Will really misses seeing all the teachers and friends at church. We enjoy watching all the programs online, and it brings a big smile to his face when Miss Teresa say his name as she welcome all the kids. We pray that everyone stays healthy and that we will see each other again soon. Thank you, Will's family, for all the love and thank you for writing us a note. We miss you and we hope that all this goes away soon and we can worship God here at home. Will, thank you for the lovely note. All right, our next note comes from far away. Do you guys remember Francisco and Frederico? Yes? Well, guess where they are? They are in Mexico. However, they tune in and they watch our program every Sabbath. And they ask mom to, we want to go to Sabbath, Sabbath school. And here is what mom wrote. Our family is so appreciative of Kids Connection team. Every week, the boys, that is Francisco and Frederico, they ask, can we go to Sabbath school? That's so cool. And I bet that they're watching right now. Francisco, Frederico, I hope that God is keeping you safe in Mexico where you are along with your family. We can't wait to see you guys back here. Thank you, Mom, for writing this, uh, this note. And we appreciate all the love that you shared with us. Now, our third note comes from JR and Seth. And here is what Seth wrote with the help of mom. We miss going to church every Sabbath and hanging out with all the other kids. We haven't been able to go to daycare, but our parents are working really hard to keep us busy even though they're both working from home. Last week, I, this is Seth, I turned two years old. Happy birthday, Seth! Seth turned two, congratulations! Whoa, this is amazing. We can't wait to see you again so we can give you a nice hug and wish you a happy birthday. So he continues by saying, I turned two years old and we even camped in our backyard in a big red tent, red tent. It was so much fun. Every night we pray that everyone who is sick feels better and that God takes care of everyone. See you guys soon, JR and Seth. JR and Seth, we miss you guys too. Thank you so much for writing us the note. We, we love you and we want to see you guys very soon here at Kids Connection. Now, if you want to send us a note and if you want us to read your note to your friends or to, our teacher, to your teachers or to us here at Kids Connection or to KID. Speaking of KID, I want to share something about KID happening later today. Go ahead, send us an email. The email is it's VD kidsconnection at gmail.com VD stands for Vallejo Drive so it's VD kidsconnection at gmail.com 
Send us an email. I need your names and I need that new little note. We will read your note uh, on the air on the next program. And thank you so much for the three, uh, for Will, for Francisco and Frederico from Mexico and from JR and Seth who wrote us this little note. Now, later I'm going to share something about what's happening with Kid today, 7, this afternoon, and how you can get involved and you can tell us what is going to happen next Sabbath, okay? So it's coming up. But for now, I'm going to invite you guys to welcome to Kids Connection by standing up and singing our song of the day. You know why? Because I want you guys not to worry. Don't worry about a thing. Whoa, that was a fun song. Remember when we sang that song here at Kids Connection? And we also sang that song right here in this room doing our VBS not long ago. Wasn't that great? I hope you guys enjoy singing the song of the day. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. Thank you for another Kids Connection that is on the way. We ask that you bless us. Bless each kid that are watching this program at home right now, whatever they are. Be with them and help us learn a little bit about, about you and connect with you a little bit more today. Thank you for being our God, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, let's go ahead and listen to our missionary story. 
Last week, we talked about a boy that really enjoyed soccer. Do you remember that? I hope you do, because today we're going to talk about some youth and what they are doing to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, here at Kids Connection, we have fun together. We have all the kids that come in and we play together. We play the games together. We sing songs together and we are sharing the love of Jesus. In other places of the world, we have some missionaries that they're also doing the same thing. However, they're doing it in a different way. Let's watch what the youth, missionaries youth, are doing in other places of the world and where our offering is going to help them continue to share the love of Jesus. Let's watch our missionary story. In the 1880s, Ellen White visited Oslo, Norway and preached at the Bethel Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today, Oslo is one of Europe's most expensive cities, although it ranks high on quality of life. It's the center of the Norwegian economy and government. The Betel Church still operates at a prime location in the heart of the city. On Sabbath, you'll find a melting pot of cultures forming Sabbath school classes and then coming together for the main service. In this church, youth are a high priority. In 2017, a portion of your 13 Sabbath offering started a renovation project for a space specifically for youth outreach. The youth group in Oslo is very active and inclusive. Today, Alex and Marielle are asking church members to spread the word about upcoming events to any young person they know. There are universities scattered throughout Oslo, with many students hoping to make new friends. This group happily welcomes newcomers into the close-knit community. Events are scheduled throughout the week for the youth to connect with each other outside of church, too. I love the cabin trips that we have, <laughs> going skiing and hanging out together, because then you get to have like a lot of uh, deep conversations together, too, with friends that you normally don't get the possibility to uh, in normal settings. I'm a very social being. I need people. <laughs> and. Uh, just a bunch of great guys and girls, good people to hang around with. On this Sabbath, they've planned a picnic in the park after church where they can socialize and get to know each other. For me, I don't always think about it as much as uh, it bring, you know, the youth group, more as uh, it's my friends, we want to go uh, hang out and then we can just like make, sort of make an arrangement and get together. Each Sabbath afternoon, the youth group from the Bethel Church joins young Adventists and their friends from all over Oslo for conversation, testimonies, and music. This gives them another opportunity to recharge spiritually and socially. Although this larger community benefits from spending time together, there are many in Oslo who don't know Jesus. The challenges of working in such a large urban area can be discouraging. Norway is a very secular country, so uh, of course it makes it more difficult for mission workers telling people about the gospel because everyone has sort of heard about it and they have in, in a way made their own opinion about it, so it makes it very difficult to show them how good it really is. The young people in Oslo ask Adventists around the world to join them in prayer. We need prayer for trying to have the best kind of environment for people to get more involved with God and each other. So pray for some spiritual guidance, help us to be more or better at meeting people and uh, show others that we are Christians. Please pray for this group in Norway and thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering that is helping this group reach more young people. Whoa, that was a great story. And it's incredible how they are sharing Jesus' love and God's love with those people. And they are connecting. Did you see that? How they are connecting with outside activities and they're doing things and events 
just like we did here at Kids Connection, they are connecting with people who they can share the love of Jesus. And our offering is going to help them to continue to uh, share the love of Jesus and love of God with other people. Thank you for your offering. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and click on the link above and where you, mom and dad can donate to the missionaries for today's offering. Thank you. Now, today I want to share something very, very fun with you. I'm going to invite my daughter, Lanessa, to come out here today. Lanessa, uh, always, every now and then, she helps me with explaining a few things. So, uh, Lanessa, come on up here. And we're going to ask you boys and girls, hello. Now, earlier today, I asked that mom and dad or an adult or whoever is with you at home, be ready because we want to, we want your help so we can explain and, and help the kids understand something. Now, before we get to that, let me just um, show you guys something. Um, Lanessa, can you do me a favor? Here. Can you turn around this way? And I think it's right here. Yes. So now, Lanessa, I'm going to ask you to cross your arms in front of your, of your chest. Yes, like that. Thank you. Now, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? Don't bend your knees. Don't bend your knees. I'm going to ask you to fall back, and I'm going to catch you on a count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that was scary, wasn't it? Yes, yes! <laughs> that was scary. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it on this side now. Ready? Here we go. Here's Lanessa. Here I am. Lanessa, I am very, very far away from you. Now, go ahead and close your eyes. Eyes closed and fall back. Whoa! <laughs> that was scary again. Whoa, that was scary. However, was that fun? Uh, kind of fun, maybe a little bit scary. Right, it was a little bit scary. Yes, and, and but however, she fell back with her eyes closed. And why did you fall back with your eyes closed? She fell back with her eyes closed because she trusts me. Now, I'm going to ask you to ask mom, dad, uncle, or aunt, grandma, or grandpa, or whoever you are watching this with at home. Ask them to do the same thing. I'm going to show you one more time, okay? Here it is. Lanessa is right here, okay? I'm going to take one step back, one step back. Now, I'm going to ask her to fall. Mom and dad... Are you guys helping the kids at home? Yes? Okay. So I'm going to give you a little more time for you to get ready. And we're going to do this together. I'm going to do it here. And you guys are going to do it at home. Ready? I'm going to get ready right behind Lanessa. Lanessa, close your eyes. Kids, close your eyes at home. On a count of three, we're all going to fall back. Mom and dad and someone is going to catch you. Don't have your sister or your brother or any little one catch you behind. Make sure that it's an adult to play this game, okay? Make sure that it's an adult. So, Renessa, parents, everyone ready at home? Here we count. Here we go. On a count of three. One, two, three, fall. Whoa! Again. I hope that you guys got to fall at home and someone to you. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? All right. So, you guys get to do it again. Okay? You get to do it again. And I'm going to thank Lanessa for joining us, for uh, helping us demonstrate. Now, why did you fall back? Why did Lanessa fall back? Do you know who was behind you? Huh? Do you know that, did you know that this person was actually going to catch you? Lanessa, did you know that I was going to catch you? But yet you fell back because Lanessa trust, trust me. And her trust made, helped her close her eyes, cross her arms, and fall back. And because of that trust, I was able to catch her and not let her down because she knew and she knows that her father 
I will not do something to hurt her and I will always protect her. Lanessa, I want you to bring our new family member here uh, from you right now. I'm gonna show you guys something and I wanna explain why I'm showing this to you, okay? So Lanessa is gonna bring someone here to me and I'm gonna show you guys, um, um, I'm gonna introduce you to someone if you haven't met her yet. Thank you. Hello, say hello to Rosie. Yes, Rosie is our very energetic puppy. She is three months old and she's a multi -poo. Look at, look at her. She's so cute. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. Yes, 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 yes. She has a little, a little, a little uh, a tag, name tag here that says Rosie with our phone number in the back. Now, Rosie is three and a half months old. Excuse me. She's three months old. We have her for two weeks now. She's very energetic. She loves to play around the house. She loves chasing Lanessa. She loves chasing a ball and she loves pulling a little a little bone and 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 rustling with a with a rug where's that where's that the, the the rope that we just got her we just got her a new rope now because she loves to play with all the toys that we gave her let me show you thank you here it is look at look at this toy come on rosie look at the toy look at look at her look at her see that see, see that you see you see how she's trying to catch oh she got it ha 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 she she got her rope and this is one of the toys that she plays with now why am i showing you rosie here today well first of all i want you to see our little pup look at her oh isn't she cute she's so cute i know and she's looking at lanessa behind the camera here but i'm showing you rosie today because i want to explain you something Rosie doesn't know anything. She can't cook. She cannot clean the house. She can't go outside by herself because the doors are closed. She needs someone to care for her. No. With only two weeks, yes, Rosie, with only two weeks, we learn how to love this little puppy and she became a part of our family and what I want you guys to understand something that has to do with our lesson today is that Rosie she doesn't worry about anything Rosie doesn't worry that she can't she doesn't she can't go outside by herself she she doesn't care where her food is coming from. Rosie doesn't worry about anything at all. Do you know why? Because Rosie has us. She has me, she has Lanessa, she has Larissa, and she has mom to take care of her. And because of that, she doesn't have to worry about where her food is coming from, where the water is coming from, she doesn't have to worry that she needs to take a bath by herself. We give her a bath. We play with her. We take her for walks because we love Rosie. The same way that Lanessa felt back and I caught her and she didn't worry about that she was going to fall. The same way Rosie trusts us that we are going to take care of her. Right, Rosie? Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. Now, what does this have to do with our lesson today? Well, today in our classroom, we are going to learn how to trust someone. We're going to learn, we're going to hear a story about trusting God. And when we trust God and we put everything in His hands, we actually don't have to worry about anything. Just like our song of, of the day, don't worry about a thing. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you guys to join us again singing our song of the day, don't worry about a thing. While me and Rosie here are going to be singing right here at Kids Connection. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. Thank you for coming, Rosie. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. 
I hope that you've had a great week and that everything's going well with you at home and also at school. Got a great lesson today. It's going to be pretty quick, but as you can see from the title on the screen, uh, God will meet our needs. And we're going to see a real life story about that uh, from you know our day uh, today. And then we're going to look back at a quick Bible story and see how God worked um, in, you know, in those days. And then what does God want for us? So let's bow our heads and pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day. Thank you for life, and love that we have in, uh, with friends and family, and especially with you. And you give us our life, and you showed us love by giving us your son, Jesus Christ, as our Savior. So today, Lord, as we look at um, how you're meeting our needs, we pray, Lord, that this will strengthen our faith and our decisions in our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so God will meet our needs. Um, I wonder if we really believe that. I wonder if we're willing to step out in faith and let God actually do this and show by his um, mighty power and also just by following you know, God's word, if we're gonna see this, that he's gonna meet our needs. I'd like to start first with some uh, restaurant that many of you might know, maybe some of you, um, you know, go here. Uh, Chick-fil-A. So, the story about Chick-fil-A. What's significant about this restaurant that makes it different from just about every other restaurant in the United States of America, let alone maybe the whole world? What makes it different? Well, serving chicken doesn't do that because a lot of restaurants serve chicken. But what makes this restaurant unique is that it is closed one day of the week. In fact, the founder of the restaurant decided he wanted to follow um, you know, God's commands and he wanted to you know, give a day of rest to his employees. So Chick-fil-A has been closed because of the, um, you know, the Christian you know, beliefs of the owner, it's closed every Sunday. Now, can you think of any other restaurant that is closed on Sundays? No, every chain restaurant, every private restaurant, they're all open on Sundays just about, right? There might be an exception here or there. He decided to close on Sundays and, he's, and it's been like this, you know, for as long as that we can remember. So, how has God blessed this man, his family, his employees, and even the customers? How, how has God blessed him? Well, you might not believe it, but Chick-fil-A, as of 2019, is the third largest sales um, restaurant in the United States of America. It's number three. There's only two that do better. You can probably think of maybe what they are. Give you a second to think about that. Okay, so number two is Starbucks. Isn't that amazing? Chick-fil-A is right behind Starbucks in sales. And number one, of course, is the all-time you know, leader, and that's still McDonald's. Chick-fil-A, number three. They're closed on Sundays. That's you know over 15, what, around 15% of the work week or the, just the week, that they're not doing any sales. And God has abundantly blessed this restaurant chain. You know, the owner said, you know, we need to rest on, uh, on the Lord's Day. And of course, you know, the owner, you know, believed that that is Sunday. And look at how God has amazingly blessed a chicken, a fried chicken restaurant. It's pretty amazing. When we follow God's commands and don't do just what the world says we should do, 
um, God adds his blessings. And as we look back at the title here, will God meet our needs? And it seems like God's met the needs of the people um, that own and work for Chick-fil-A. Okay, now let's go back in time. Let's go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Daniel. And let's take a look at the situation that um, Daniel and his friends were found in. Remember, the Babylonians were allowed by God to you know, destroy the city of Jerusalem and take the people captive, whoever they wanted to, to bring them back to Babylon. Remember, this was a punishment for God's people who were not obeying God. They, they were idolatrous. They were worshiping other gods, idols, and so forth, putting other things before God, right? So Daniel and his friends, they were, you know, the upper class, I believe, highly intelligent. The king wanted them to serve in his administration. He thought that they could be taught and, excuse me, my phone, and that they could, um, you know, help his, uh, help his empire. So as soon as they were captured, he wanted to put them into some training. And one of the things was the food that they were going to eat. Now, of course, Babylonians, they didn't eat like clean foods. They didn't go by um, God's recommendations or God's desires and God's commands in the Bible for what's good to eat and what shouldn't be eaten. So as you can see in the picture here, the king's, uh, one of the king's servants is, you know, trying to give Daniel and his three friends um, food from the king's table. Food that the king believed would, you know, strengthen them and help them to learn and so forth. Well, as you can see, Daniel's putting it on his hand and saying, no, thank you. And he said, please just give us vegetables and water. Now, when's the last time you asked your mom or dad just to give you vegetables and water? And not just for one day. Daniel, Daniel said, look, try us for 10 days, just vegetables to eat, just water to drink, and see if we're not as intelligent, as energetic, as strong as the other people that you're giving the king's food to that you know, that they're going to be eating this, all these things that we don't think are good for us. And at first, the, um, you know, the servant of King Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to do that because he thought, hey, if you guys aren't looking that good, then it's, I'm going to be in big trouble. And Daniel said, well, look, just try it 10 days and see. And if, you know, we're looking worse, then we'll go along with the program, okay? So Daniel even though it was against the rules to eat just vegetables and water. He wanted to follow God's way. So he said no. And then 10 days later, they were just eating vegetables, drinking water. The king's servant comes back and Daniel and his friends look much healthier more energetic, sharper minds, and all that sort of thing. And so, you know, here Daniel, again, if we look back at, you know, God meeting our needs, right? So, yeah, God said, eat healthy. Daniel's friends said, okay, we're going to eat healthy. And then, you know, the Nebuchadnezzar's servant saw this. And he said, okay, you can just keep on eating vegetables, drinking water and you're fine. And so, you know, God was, you know, uh, added a blessing to Daniel's decision to, to follow him. You know, in both these situations, that of Daniel and his friends, that of the owner of Chick-fil-A restaurants, they followed what they believed God wanted from them. They were seeking God's will in their life. They just didn't want to go their own way. Not just, you know, like in Daniel's case, just going along because 
the law of the land says that you got to eat the king's food if you're in one of the schools or Chick-fil-A just saying, oh, you know, we should be open seven days a week because then we'll make more sales. No, these people decided to want to follow God's ways. Now, how about ourselves? How much do we think about that? I'd like to, us to go to the um, book of Matthew, it's chapter 6, verses uh, 25. I'll just take a look at my Bible. Verses 25 to 33. And see what the Lord says to us about um, God providing for us. Verse 25, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? And then, and then look at here. Oh, you of little faith. Right? God's talking to us right here right? about our, our faith, our trust in him, providing for us. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles strive after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So verse 33 is sort of the summary of it, right? So, like Chick-fil-A, they sought first the kingdom of God, right? To close on what they think is the Lord's day, to honor God, to give rest to their employees as... God wishes, right? Seeking first the kingdom of God. Daniel and his friends, right? Deciding to not want to go along with the law of what the king wants them to eat and requesting that they can have the food that God would provide would be more nourishing, more healthy. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and God will bless you for that. That's, that's for sure. It's a hundred percent guarantee. Does it mean that you're not going to go through trials? Well, look at Daniel. He went through a trial, didn't he? And his friends, right? Their city was demolished. He was taken as a prisoner. That's a trial. But God was looking to see that Daniel, within that trial, within that challenge, would stay faithful and would trust in him. My friends, let's put our faith and trust in God and seek first his kingdom. And all these things will be added unto you. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, what a great message you have for us. We thank you for it. We thank you for the messages found in scripture and we're thankful for those people that are being faithful to you, Lord, and that are seeking your kingdom and your righteousness first. And Lord, put that into our heart that we might also be of the same, that we might receive the blessing of doing what you've asked us to do to walk out in faith. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, my friends, hope that was a blessing to you. And as we go forward this week, remember this, right? Look at the times when you think God is putting you through trials. And instead of worrying about it, look for opportunities 
to be faithful to God, to seek his righteousness in those difficult times. If God's testing our characters, right? And so, you know, we just want to, um, you know, be faithful to him, trust him, right? He wants what's best for us. So until next time, my friends, good to see you all. Um, actually, can't see you, but hopefully we'll be back together again soon when the, when the church reopens. Okay, God bless you all. Uh, see you later.